and welcome to Geo Snippets. I'm Head Hard Hat. In the next few minutes, we hope to show you some interesting information about geocaching. Today's episode is part one of two on paperless geocaching. So what exactly is paperless geocaching? It's sort of what it sounds like. Instead of printing out all your maps, all your different cache information on dozens of pieces of paper, it all gets stored from files onto an electronic device. Now what I have here is what's known as a Palm Pilot. This is a TX edition. Palm makes several different types. Uh, what it is is we take files from different areas, store it onto this particular device, and that's all you need. So what we're going to do in this part one and part two is to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to take those files off of your computer and get them onto this device so you can get out onto the trails and do some geocaching. Let's go over the basics of what you're going to need here in part one of paperless geocaching. Okay, so very quickly what we're going to do today in this tutorial is go over getting the files which are pocket queries from geocache.com they come in your email we're going to unzip those files which creates a .gpx file we're going to load that information which is all the stuff about caches into an application called gsac and then we're going to export that into a format that can go and be loaded into your palm so what you see in front of you now is an email that contains a pocket query that is sent from geocaching.com. It deals with the Raleigh, North Carolina area and contains about 500 caches. Below you'll see that there is a unique identifier number and a dot .zip. To obtain this file out of the email, you just simply click uh, download and it will give you the opportunity to save it onto your file in any folder that you'd like. Uh, you click save and you find out which folder that you would like to place this in and an opportunity to rename it. I highly recommend that you rename all your pocket queries to something that is significant to you. Instead of an identification number, in this case I'm going to put Raleigh. Then it'll have a Raleigh.zip and will be saved. Now that we've gotten the file from the email onto your hard disk, you notice that it has the name that you called it, in this case Raleigh.zip. You simply right click it and then select Extract All. This will bring out the Unzip Wizard. You simply double check everything, click the Next button. This will say what directory you want this file to be extracted into. Uh, you simply click Next again and it will extract it. Uh, you want to make sure you have extract all there to show the files and then it will extract the files into the folder that you selected. Now what you have here are the two .gpx files. They are geared for GSAC. You don't want the one that is .waypoints. That is something that you, know, you won't touch in this particular case. So you simply select the ID number .gpx. You double click it and it will open up GSAC automatically. Once there, you may have already existing files. It will be simply asking you what database that you want to put this into. This shows the identification number in the zip GPX file, what database that you want it to go into. When you're sure everything is the way that you want to, you go down to the OK button and click that. It then loads the files. We're going to speed things up a little bit here and it's loading all those 500 files into the database for GSAC. This is a very, very handy utility when it comes to geocaching. Here's your summary. It shows how many files you have. It will show you any new uh, records that you may already have uh, on hand that are now new to there. It has ones that already exist and ones that have been updated since the last time you loaded it in. Then there's a final summary showing you the ID number in the .gpx file and the number of files. Click OK again and you're all set to go to the next phase. 
I really wish we had more time to show you GSAC. It is a very rich, multitasking type application that gives you everything that you possibly can use for uh, geocaching. And we'll do that on a separate tutorial. But in this particular case, to export the file for your palm, you simply click File, Export, and then CacheMate.pdb file. And that will give you the screen that you see now which gives you the last bits of information of where you want this file to go to and what you want to call it. Okay, so we're almost done with the export now. Uh, the only thing you have to really concern yourself about with this particular screen here is that it's going to show where it's going to create the .pdb file. It defaults to a name called Waypoints. Uh, if you want it someplace else, you can change it and rename it, but the idea is this is going to create the file that is going to go onto your palm by the use of the CacheMate application that should also be installed on your palm. And this is to simply take the file information and put it over there. To do that, you click Generate and it will ask you if uh, you've done this before, uh, do you want to override it? In most cases you're going to select yes. Uh, this is going to start the uh, transfer. We've sped it up here so it's a little quicker for you. Uh, then it's also going to do the final conversion of the file and it's literally going to start up your active sync on your palm. If you're used to a palm device, active sync is another form of getting the information from your computer onto your palm. It's the main conduit for that. This is simply showing some final summary information, number of waypoints that were converted, all things like that. You simply click OK. Once that's there, this shows you your beginnings of your active sync. The idea is simple. It's created your waypoints file into an area that uh, it shows here for adding to your palm. You click OK. What you want to do here is in the top section of active sync, that would put the file in your regular memory. If you have an SD card, the best thing to do is to left click and hold, drag it down to the bottom section, and that will automatically put it onto your SD card, give you a little more room. So we're going to leave this at this point of being ready to be synced up with your palm. Let's go on now to some more information that deals with geocaching. And now here's some things you should know. Now when you're out and about geocaching, there are many little handy tools that's really good to keep with you. This is an example of one of them. This is a collapsible or expandable rod. On the very end of it is a rather powerful magnet. Now what this is handy for is sometimes caches get hidden way out of reach. For example, there could be a magnetic 35 millimeter container, a metal bison tube, items like that where you just can't reach with your hand because they're stuck in a small hole or in a small crevice out of reach. This little device keep it in your pocket when you go geocaching will make it a lot easier to retrieve those type of caches. This is a little tidbit from the head hard hat to you. Well we hope you enjoyed this episode of Geo Snippets and come back for part two. There you'll find even more interesting information about geocaching. Till then this is head hard hat saying we hope to see you out on the trails. Bye bye folks.